stupid in America? When it comes to education, maybe. How can you have a system where all the workers are thinking we're doing a great job for our kids and what we're producing for them is 8% success? Kids aren't learning, but school spending is through the roof. Why? What's gone wrong? The bureaucracy is what's wrong. It's the blob, people it's, call it. It's the blob, and it is. It's like the reformers are up against Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> it's the unions and the paper pushers. Let's destroy the system. Good. Bring on the creative destruction. Who would disagree? Teachers' unions disagree, and they're mad at me. And mad at reformers who care about test scores. City schools are terrible because of unions like yours. Our test scores are not what we choose to focus on. But how do you know if they're learning anything? I know my kids are learning when I look in their eyes. Give me a break. The Blob also opposes charter schools. Over my dead body, they're going to come there. Unions are mad because some charters can fire bad teachers. I call it freeing up a person's future. What's wrong with that? A teacher wants to teach. This actor says teachers need tenure. Why else would you take a salary? Why have tenure? Most professions don't have tenure. But at least now, there's some good news. Yeah. <laughs> at yeah. some schools where teachers can be fired, kids learn. Give us the worst school anywhere in America, and we'll outperform the other schools in five years. How good are the test scores at his charter schools? There isn't even a word for it. But unions say such charters avoid the problem kid. No way! I love foods. But sadly, up to now, adult foods have run the show and made us stupid in America. School spending has tripled over the past 40 years. We now spend much more than other countries, but what do we get? Fancier schools, more assistant principals, but student learning? No improvement. Look at it. There's the line. For 40 years, scores have been flat. Much more money, no improvement. This is awful. But there is some good news. Around America, some very cool things are starting to happen. But school is boring. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I know. I went to school. Grade school was boring. So was high school. So was Princeton. Except for the party parts. But fourth grade? You have to learn reading and writing. That's work. Reading is work. But it's rockin' awesome. Rockin' awesome? And these kids say school is fun? Yes. How is it fun to learn? <gasps> they just teach us in a fun way. So you guys look forward to going to school in the morning? Yes. These kids attend one of those new charter schools. It's free public schools, but their charter lets the school escape the bureaucracy of regular schools, including teachers' union rules. This school enrolls the inner-city kids bureaucrats label at risk of failure. But these kids learn. Devin is 100% on top of her game right now. Going to our school is uh, a ticket to educational success. This woman runs several charter schools. All get outstanding test scores. And you do this all with the same money the public schools get? We actually do it with less. Four and six thousand dollars less per child. How? For less money. Do they get the kids so interested? You're interested in math and yes, yes. reading, yes. writing. But learning is work. It don't matter. <laughs> the school day here is longer. Kids often stay till 5 p.m. Charter teachers can be asked to work more than the union would have allowed. They told us they don't mind. But you're going to burn out. Why aren't you ticked off? That's not an option for us because. We kind of have our eye on the prize with these kids. They use all sorts of new teaching techniques. Sometimes teachers wear earpieces during class, and then they're coached by their bosses. What are they telling you? They're telling me things that I don't see. If I don't think of a great question in, this, in the moment, my principal's able to kind of feed that to me through the earpiece. We kind of view teachers as athletes in the Olympics, and they need constant support and coaching to be at the top of their game. Kids at this school constantly wave their hands around. It confused me, but then the students explained it's what they call active listening. Instead of interrupting class to blurt out, say, can I go to the bathroom, or I agree with that, the students make hand gestures. What's the symbol for agree? 
Not, no, you know, this. Like this. Oh. High test scores made these charters so popular that parents line up, hoping to get their kids admitted. This line goes on and on forever. Goes around the block. So many applicants, but not that many spaces. So, what do you do when you have thousands of people in just a few hundred slots? They hold a lottery. The winners are happy. Sadly, there are many more losers. On the other end of America, in Oakland, California, another charter chain gets similar top results using different methods. Here's what I say: Give me the worst school in Oakland, black, Mexican, polka dot. Give us the worst school anywhere in America, and we'll take it, and we'll we'll outperform the other schools in five years. Ben Chavis created the model at the American Indian Public Charter Schools, right in the heart of a rough neighborhood. Now these are hard workers here. The kids at American Indian schools now have some of the highest test scores in California. And you can do that on the same amount the state gives every school. We get less. We get less than every other school. The kids in American Indian. Public charter schools are scoring so far above the average for the state for public school children that there isn't even a word for it. They use different techniques from the charters in Harlem. Here at American Indian, they pay some kids to tutor other kids. We hire our students and we pay them. Thank you. They're excited. They're going to make some money. Chavis is politically incorrect. <laughs> What you going to study? Science. Science. A Mexican in science? <laughs> yeah, good for you, honey. You'll be a rare bird. He's been criticized for imposing strict rules. You got in trouble with your boy. They're stricter because they really want us to succeed. A teacher made this student do push-ups in the hallway because he didn't follow directions. You actually have to try hard when you're here. I hate Saturday school. Oh my, God. my other school, we didn't have as much homework. We had like one page of homework, but then here we have six subjects of homework. And then the teachers were a lot nicer, and here they're a lot meaner. Meaner, and yet no students been expelled since the school began in 2000. No way! I love fools. I love the kids who get in trouble because you can take a kid who's acting like a fool or gets in trouble and use them as an example. It's cruel, your critics say. We have a sixth grade student acts up in class; he'll be sent to sit on the floor in an eighth grade class. Yes, that's true. And embarrassment keeps people in line, whether we want to admit it or not. Even gym class is strict. At my old school, we play games every every PE, but here. It's either running for ten minutes or running around the block. You fire people at your schools. They should be fired. You fired a teacher after one day. She is incompetent. You could tell in one day. Yes,、yeah, she is incompetent. Last year, I thought I was going to get fired a few times. If I'm not doing a good job, it's over, and it could happen at the drop of a dime. That's not true at most government-run schools, especially union ones. Union teachers are happy that they can't be suddenly fired. But these charter teachers can be. You can get canned in a moment. Doesn't it bother you? If I'm not doing my job, per se, and I was fired for that, so be it. If I was a doctor and I wasn't good, I mean, I wouldn't have a job. No one would come to me, right? I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot maintain quality unless you can fire people, says this charter founder. It's as as many as we must and as little as we can. Have you fired more than ten? Uh, in three schools in eight years, yes. But while bad teachers might get fired, good teachers are given freedom. They can choose their textbooks, their teaching methods, as long as they, every quarter and every year, make sure that the students are learning what they need to learn at the end of the day. In Harlem, 43 percent of eighth graders get passing grades in state math tests. 100 percent of her kids pass. So, if such charters work, why aren't there more of them? Don't be fooled. Because unions and supporters of traditional schools hate charters. This protest occurred outside one of Eva Moskowitz's charters. Eva Moskowitz must go. I hope it's not personal, but it may be. This union boss doesn't want charters in what he calls his schools. Over my dead body, they're going to come there. Does he get to stop them? When we return, I'll confront the unions about that and other strange things union bosses said, like 
We shouldn't judge teachers by how well students do on tests. But how do you know if they're learning anything? I know my kids are learning when I look in their eyes. What? More Stupid in America when we return. Those great new charter schools we showed you, I just wish there were more of them, more competition, because competition makes everybody better. But there are some people who don't like my saying that. The Teachers Union, five million members strong. This group is mad at me. We are here to demand an apology from 2020's John Stossel. I had done another show called Stupid in America that said it was impossible to fire bad teachers. The union boss said, because of my program. Educators all over the country feel that they have been kicked in the teeth. They were surprised when I came outside to hear them. The union said I should be educated. So just teach for a week. The crowd liked the idea of me teaching for a week. Teach, John, teach. Teach, John, teach. I think I surprised them again when I said, okay, I'll teach. But then they changed their mind. Union President Randy Weingarten won't talk to me anymore, but two other union bosses did. Joe Del Grasso, head of Newark's Teachers Union, and Nathan Saunders of Washington, D.C.'s. City schools are terrible because of unions like yours. Well, I would disagree. We have progress as a result of unions. Three days before, Saunders led this protest march to complain about plans to pay teachers based on how well their students do on tests. The protesters even composed an anti-test song. Test, teacher, test, teacher, 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 I think I know why the union doesn't like testing. Your results are awful. They're among the lowest in the nation. You make an argument that it's the lowest in the nation based upon the test scores. Now, I would say that ours can get better, but I would say that ours are... Your predecessors, the unions, have been saying that for years. I think the unions have uh, a pretty strong history of advocating for high-quality public education. But not achieving it. Our test scores are not what we uh, uh, choose to focus on. We choose to focus on teaching kids. But how do you know if they're learning anything if you don't test them and compare? I know my kids are learning when I look in their eyes. The protesters had celebrity support. Actor Matt Damon. He was asked by a woman from Reason TV about the rules that make it hard to fire a union teacher. In acting, you, there, is, there isn't job security, right? Why isn't it like that for teachers? You think job insecurity is what makes me work hard? Well, you have an incentive to work harder, but if there's I, job I security... Be an actor. It's not an incentive. That's the thing. So you take this MBA-style thinking, right? MBA-style. Business school ideas. Well, yes. Charter schools, vouchers, even Obama's race to the top are based on the idea that competition's good. If kids are free to take their school money to any school, competition among schools, including for-profit chains, will force all the schools to get better or go out of business. The best schools will expand. But the unions don't like that market competition. There's a profit uh, motive behind all of this extra testing. We need to get the corporations out of the schools. The union says school choice would enrich corporations, but further impoverish poor teacher. Business types of every stripe is suddenly concerned over greedy teachers and our riches that they earn. Teachers paid enough? No. But you got some teachers making over $100,000 a year. And they aren't making enough. Matt Damon agrees with that. His mom's a union teacher. A teacher wants to teach. I mean, why else would you take a salary and really long hours? Teachers make a salary? Well, maybe to Matt Damon, but today American teachers make more per hour than accountants, nurses, architects. I can guarantee you this, it's not about the money. Kevin Chavis is a former D.C. politician. When I was chairman of the Education Committee on the D.C. Council, I gave the school system $300 million new dollars. Teachers got more money than ever to educate 10,000 fewer kids, and the test scores went down. Now, what they did do, 
that grew center office. They had more deputies to the assistant to the deputy to the assistant. They grew the bureaucracy. And the former district chancellor, Michelle Ree, found that the bigger bureaucracy didn't even get school supplies to the kids. Walking into schools and seeing that there were no books in the library, the kids didn't have supplies and pencils, and then the following week I visited the warehouse of the school district where there were boxes and boxes of books and scissors and glue. And so why didn't they get to the school? Exactly. That was the question. That well, Why didn't they get to the school? It was just a complete and utter uh, sense of dysfunction and a lack of accountability. It's a reason they call the school bureaucracy the blob. It's like this blobby job of the hut thing that can't be budged. The blob is the teachers' union, janitors' unions, the politicians, the school board bureaucrats. And if you try to make a change, the blob says... We don't do that here. We have to requisition downtown. we got to get four or five people to sign off. The deputy director of curriculum has to say this is okay. It's crazy. Both union leaders escaped that bureaucracy. You went to private school. That's correct. It kind of made me feel that I had better do pretty good in that school or else. I'll confront the union bosses when we return. Why can't other people have the choice they had. Also, why does it cost a third of a million dollars to fire just one union teacher? What's wrong with these people? Look who sent their kids to private school. Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, Al Gore. The people who are making the rules already have choice. You know, the politicians, and I used to be a politician, the politicians have choice. Yet all these politicians who sent their kids to private school oppose school choice for regular people. Thank you for taking my question, President Obama. I wanted to know whether or not you think that Malia and Sasha would get the same high-quality, rigorous education in a D.C. public school. If I wanted to find a great public school for Malia and Sasha to be in, we could probably maneuver to do it. But apparently, he didn't want to. The president now sends Sasha and Malia to Sidwell Friends. It's the same school the vice president's grandkids attend. Tuition? $32,000 a year. And the union leaders? You went to private school. That's correct. I graduated a Catholic high school. Joe Del Grasso is head of Newark's teachers' union. He's a tough negotiator. At this school board meeting, when the chairman said he'd used up his speaking time, Del Grasso marched up to the front to demand more, saying, my union contract mandates seven more minutes than I got. The rigidity of this stupid union contract is why the kids suffer. Your union is the problem. I think you know better than that. Del Grasso opposes letting kids escape his rules by, say, allowing them to attend charter schools in existing school buildings. Over my dead body, they're going to come there. I'm going to be there and physically try and stop them. There's certain things that don't mix. Oil and water, you, you can't emulsify them. There's no room? There aren't these half-empty no, schools? There's no, there's not half-empty schools. Del Grasso says charters favor rich kids. But Newark Public Schools spend almost 400 thou per classroom. The charters get less. Not that much less. According, but they get less. It's hardly the rich versus the poor. Happy for them. We don't want to let them into your schools. Don't want them in our schools. Why should they? Oh, be you're in not our happy school? for them then. Well, listen. Does Fox and CNN are they in the same building? I don't think so. But Fox and CNN can't banish the competition. Competition's good. Competition is why we have Fox, CNN, and MSNBC. When you have a choice of what channel you're going to watch or what school you attend. Competition makes things better. Del Grasso understands that about his own education. My mother paid for me to go to it, and it kind of made me feel that I had better do pretty good in that school or else. Well, so, it sounds like you're arguing against the unionized public schools. I'm not arguing against them. Most of the independent schools are still Catholic schools doing a great job for less than half the money you spend. No, I wouldn't say that. 17,000 versus 5,000. John, tell them to have another bingo game and get it over with. Catholic schools fire bad teachers. 
but government-run schools really can't because teachers get tenure. Why have tenure? Most professions don't have tenure. When you went into organized crime, you got to be a made person. It was like a ceremony, <laughs> but not in getting tenure, which is a nice thing. And it's you kind should. of like organized crime. And you're in forever unless you die or are killed. <laughs> well, you know, th th there's that perspective of it. You're a good teacher. There shouldn't be a problem with it. Well, here's one problem. Not every teacher is good. Some are really lousy. It's impossible well, to fire these tenured but teachers. But why? Because there are a million steps. No, there aren't. There's only one. It's not one step. It's, it's all these steps. Let's see. This is the list of steps required to fire a teacher in my town. This is why most principals don't even try. They look at the list of appeals like this one and just give up. Or they push the worst teachers to transfer to another school. That's such a common way to avoid these rules. There's even a name for it. The dance of the lemon. It would be funny, except these rules leave some kids stuck with terrible teachers. This is crazy. This former police investigator says it takes years to fire even an abusive teacher. Lots of people said he hit kids. Lots the kids said it. Lots of people said he hit him, and other teachers said it, that were present in the classroom. It took me four years. $283,000, $127,000 in legal fees, plus what it costs to uh, have a substitute fill in them, all while he's sitting home having popcorn. Still being we, paid by the state. Still being paid by the uh, district. He couldn't even fire the teacher who faked his doctorate. And he went to sleep in class. And he was quite disturbed when the supervisor came in and woke him up. He complained. It never ends. It never ends ends. When we return, meet someone who successfully fired hundreds of teachers. Fired your own daughter's principal. That was a, a chilly night at home. As we've seen, education in America is a mess. What will fix it? Who might fix it? Oprah thinks this woman can fix it. Thank you, Michelle. I'm Thank working you. for you. Michelle is Michelle Ree. Michelle Ree is acting chancellor. Five years ago, Mary Adrian Fenty picked her to manage D.C. schools. You had never run a school system before. I had never run a school before. Uh, and that's why people thought that Adrian Fenty was nuts. You know, I was a 37-year-old girl from Toledo, Ohio. And people said, what? Who? Yeah. People said he's lost his mind. Her friends said she'd lost hers. I have two kids, two daughters, 9 and 12, and they, I put them in the D.C. public schools. The schools were a disaster. Test results among the worst in America. <laughs> Chancellor Ree quickly learned that although only 8% of D.C.'s kids were on grade level, there was something odd about how the teachers were ranked. When I looked at the performance evaluations of the adults in the system... How good is the adult doing? Right, how good are the, are the teachers doing? I found that 95% of the adults were being rated as doing a great job. So how can you have a system where all the workers are thinking, we're doing a great job, you know, a great job for our kids, and what we're producing for them is 8% success? She visited schools and saw empty classrooms. I walk into this one school. I go into the first classroom five kids in the classroom second classroom nine kids third classroom three kids seven kids i'm thinking what's going on so finally i get to like the fifth or sixth classroom and i asked the teacher i said where are all the kids and she said well it's friday i thought really i just couldn't believe that that was the answer so i said is that is that all and she said no i thought great okay she's going to tell me that some of the kids are on a field trip or something like that and she said it's raining, too. But it turned out that not every classroom was empty. Attendance varied by teacher. So I'm walking through. I'm finishing, you know, my, my visit. And I walk into one classroom, and there are 30 kids in this classroom. There, in fact, are not enough desks for the number of kids that were there. So there are kids sitting on the radiators and whatnot. So I go to one of the kids, and I said, what do you think about the teacher? He said, this is my best teacher, bar none. As I was leaving the school, 
uh, and this was about at 10 o'clock in the morning, that young man and two of his friends were walking out of the school in front of me. So I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, excuse me, young man, where do you think you're going? And they said to me, well, our first period teacher, the one that you saw, he's great. So we came to school. But our second period teacher is not so good. So we're going to roll. And I thought, okay, this is not the picture that the American public have in their minds of truants. These children were making a very conscious decision to wake up early and to come to school for first period because they knew they were going to get something out of it and then to leave after that because they weren't going to get any value out of it. And this great teacher, he gets paid no more than all the other teachers. That's right. Gets paid no more. If we were doing seniority-based layoffs, would have gotten laid off first. So Ray decided she'd pay good teachers more and fire bad teachers. And that did not go over particularly well. Ray must go! Ray must go! A few weeks into this, I was visited by, by my then general counsel, and he sort of comes rushing into my office, and he says, you've got to stop firing people. I said, why? why? I mean, if, if, if people are not doing the jobs that they're supposed to be doing, uh, we need to move them out. And he said, well, welcome to D.C. public schools where we never fire anyone. But you did fire a lot of these people. Eventually we did. We found a 90-day loophole that let her close some lousy schools and fire some teachers. There's nothing short of a firestorm surrounding the future of the D.C. public school system. 30 school principals are being terminated this no week. No shortage of outrage tonight among parents and teachers. It was a plan, a plot, even before she took the job to get rid of uh, people who have been around who have tenure. So you fired 200 or 4,000 teachers. You closed 15% of the city's schools. Fired your own daughter's principal. That was a, a chilly night at home. She upset families, communities, students, and teachers. A lot of people got fired. She said they deserve to be fired. The system needs change. Well, many of those thought she needed to be fired. People really hated you. Hate you still. Yeah. Yeah. I was a Wicked Witch of the West. They called me the Hatchet Lady, the Dragon Lady, the Teacher Terminator. Big Bad Witch. Time magazine even put you in the cover with a broom. I actually took the broom to mean, you know, sweeping house. The blob didn't want their house swept. The union says poorly performing teachers need a second chance. Don't you have some union teachers who are just lousy? We need to lift up the low performers and help them do better. I have not... Not just fire them. Sorry, maybe teaching not, it's not for you. There's a cost to fire teachers. The quality of life of that person is deeply affected by that termination. So they are so nobody should ever be fired? Well, what we should do is help people improve their skills. People uh, would say to me, well, if a teacher is not effective, you should talk about spending the time and effort to professionally develop that person, right? I'd say, okay, but whose children are we going to put in that classroom for this year? Who are you going to practice on? Right. Who are you going to say, oh, and it didn't work out. Sorry. I mean, you only get one chance at first grade. So she changed the policy. I made a decision that we were going to do the layoffs by quality instead of seniority. And this really upset the apple cart. And people, you know, were protesting. Why would it upset the apple cart? It's just common sense to do it's it by quality. It's common sense to you and me, but it was absolutely counter to what the district had always done. It's the way that unions operate, right? I mean, seniority sort of... It just them. cheats the good young teacher. Don't they get mad? Forget the young teachers. For a it cheats the kids. Kids were a little less cheated under Re. Test scores went up when she was chancellor. But in the end, the union won. You can get her out. You can get Fitchy out. We're going to fight. If we have to be here every day, all day, all night, we will. The mayor who appointed her was voted out. And when he lost, Ree quit before she was fired. Michelle Ree becomes a casualty of D.C. politics. So Ree lost in D.C. But elsewhere in America, all sorts of new schools are succeeding. And exciting things are happening. People who try to start charter schools often say, Oh, the bureaucrats make it so hard. They put up all these obstacles, and that's why there aren't enough charters yet to have a real market. Except in one town, most kids now attend charters. 
How'd that happen? Hurricane Katrina on track to make a direct hit on the low-lying city of New Orleans. It happened Maximum because of a hurricane. It's in all eyes about New Orleans, not only a famous city, but below sea levels. This entire area will be underwater. Mother Nature is in charge, and now Mother Nature has dealt one horrific blow. When Katrina flooded New Orleans, it didn't just destroy much of the city. It also destroyed the school system. Some school reformers thought maybe that's what needed to happen. It was probably one of the worst school districts in the country. It was a horror. Before Katrina, I was schools, I mean, they were just failing. The choice was, do you rebuild what was there or do you build something entirely new? Louisiana built something new. They made it easy for people to open charters. You tell the state, here's my plan. Ben Markovitz started a charter school called Psy Academy. We have complete control over the quality of our instruction. When he started his school in 2008, he was the only employee. He drove his car around New Orleans until 3 in the morning, putting up signs advertising his school. And you see this, this number right here, that was my cell phone. He had to advertise because students had to choose to go there. They didn't just get sent here because they live nearby. We were putting these up everywhere. He even went to people's houses to recruit. Living in New Orleans, we've never had that. Her son Reggie goes to Psy Academy. He came out and he interviewed, he talked to me, then he talked to Reggie and he was explaining to him about the hours and academics and stuff. When the school opened, only a third of the students were proficient on state tests. I know half of them didn't know how to read. Now, Psy Academy's test results are among the best in the city, even though the school itself is just a bunch of trailers. There's a plan in my mind to have a permanent building, but if you walk into a school and the first thing they tell you are complaints about their facilities, they're probably not focused on the right things. How did Psy Academy do it? Pencils down, please. Good morning, third period. Well, teachers have to perform because the principal can fire at will. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we have at-well contracts at the school. Sharon Clark runs another New Orleans charter, and she, too, fires the weakest teachers. I call it freeing up a person's future. The charter law also allows parents to fire a school. If they don't like this school, they can send their kid to another. Sharon needs to work hard because she worries about losing her charter. Yes, every day, sir. Good morning, class of 2013! Good morning, that competition drives schools to try different things, like this morning ritual at Psy Academy. Who are you? A scholar! My education is my future, and the future is now! Are you here? This seems a little cult-like, and some kids didn't take it seriously. But something worked. Oh, it is a major difference. Since he's been here, he's become more responsible, uh, thinking. Even though I didn't like the school at first, as I went to school, I started to want to go to college more because I saw how important it was. Now Reggie's mother is getting ready to start college. So Reggie tutored her for a test using skills he learned at Psy. This is how it should have been before Katrina. So this charter has grown from one employee into another school that's so popular it holds a lottery to decide who gets in. We are going to have a waiting list of about 200 students long. This is our first uh, choice by far. Then, As you saw in Harlem, nervous kids and relatives sit anxiously, hoping their name will be called. Some go away happy. Thank you. Yay, you're pretty! Most do not. It just goes to show that like, this kind of school is badly, badly needed in the city. And this kind of education is exactly what we need to be offering to every single kid. Today, most kids in New Orleans attend charter schools, and test scores across the city are better. Many of the greatest cities in the world have been reborn amid crises. The Chicago fire resulted in a greater Chicago being built. The San Francisco earthquake resulted in a much more dynamic, safer city emerging. The fire of London resulted in a, in a much greater capital emerging. Well, you know, people in New Orleans are rebuilding the city for the better. The school choice movement is here to stay. It will never go back. And next, some more good news, this time from the Internet. 
the blob should be worried because look how excited these kids are about math. Yeah. Do your kids have a good teacher? How do you know? Maybe the teacher next door is better. Maybe there's a better teacher in another state. Maybe there's a world's best teacher or several. Wouldn't it be great if your kids could have that teacher? Well, today, yes, you can. Yay, I got it. Got my total. Woo! Yeah. Oh, wow. These kids are this excited about a math website. It's amazing. Negative four, minus four, and we are done. It taught me a lot of things. Five years ago, hedge fund analyst Sal Khan created videos like these to tutor his cousin. That worked out well, so then I started tutoring her brothers and more cousins and all the rest, and I had to do the same lecture over and over again. So I had a friend who, who said, hey, Sal, why don't you uh, put some of your lectures on YouTube? I decided to give it a shot. Welcome to the presentation on Basic Edition. Soon, thousands watched his lectures. I started getting letters from people and uh, comments on YouTube, and they are, they're not like, hey, I think this kind of might have helped on my math exam. They're like, I got a, I failed calculus the first time, I've started watching the videos, now I'm acing the class. The YouTube numbers kept rising, and he got letters from the Middle East, Africa. What Saul Khan has done is amazing. Now Khan is funded by Bill Gates, and he offers web lectures on everything from history to economics to computer science. His videos are viewed millions of times. Not only is it reaching millions of students right now, but even if, you know, God forbid, I got hit for, by a bus when I walked outside, it'll still be able to reach millions of, and maybe eventually billions of students. You just happen to be good at teaching? Well, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> it is a compliment. He's a great teacher. I hope that helps. See you in the next video. It's really helping us learn a lot more. It's exciting that he gets kids so excited about math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in most parts of life, things have gotten much better. Cars, computers, cell phones. Education, not so much. Right. You know, you, you rewind, I don't know, 80 or 90 or 100 years, and you would have the local band that, you know, if you, if you had a party, <laughs> that, that was the only gig and dad. Each village might have Each a village. storyteller exactly. or a singer. Exactly. Exactly. But then once you have mass media coming out, then people say, wait, why don't we take the best musician, the best actor, uh, the best storyteller in whatever way, and record it and put it out on radio, put it out on, on records or, you know, or whatever. And I think... In theory, that could have happened with education before. But it hasn't. Even for basic math, multiplication tables, I thought they'd be using video games. Yeah. Why not? There's a huge bureaucracy, most of which wants to say no to change the system. It's and the blob, people it's, call it. It's the blob. And it is. And, and I think what's fun from our point of view is that we are able to reach students outside of the blob. This California school district started using Khan's videos in fifth grade classrooms. The teachers were skeptical, but now they're impressed at what it does for the kids. They're happy to walk in the door every morning. They're excited about math. It isn't, oh, we're doing math. It's like, oh my gosh, we have math this morning. That's great. She was like learning new things. We assume that most people on their own don't want to do, don't want to learn, or don't want to get engaged in mathematics. And yeah, but, but I, I think they're just frustrated because they're, they're, most of them are in classrooms that are not catering to them. At first, teachers worried that the online instruction could replace them, but... I think it's so wrong, as my teachers would tell you. They have taught more math than they've ever taught before. Now, teachers can tutor kids one-on-one. -on -one. I noticed you were having some issues with fractions. You can go at your own pace. And because kids can go at their own pace... So I've got students who are still working on easy multiplication, and then I've got students who are working in high school math. Some kids enjoy Khan's lessons so much, okay. they study at home. Some of them are doing two and three hours a night at home when I'm asking for 15 minutes. When I'm at home and I have some time, I just log on. and It's way more fun to do math. So finally, after all these years of kids being bored in school and not learning math, that's over? I, I, I think it might be. Hope so. If it happens, it will be thanks to those online classes or the charter school, or other experiments that break out of the union-dominated government monopoly. Let a thousand flowers bloom. It's competition that's given us better medicine, transportation, technology, everything.
Don't our kids deserve that too? That's our show. I'm John Stossel. Thanks for watching.